Time now for sports news on the News at 10 with Ayotunde Balogun. Many thanks, Gimba. The title decided stage of the 2019 Handball Premier League has begun today at the Royal Park Sports Centre in Yaba, Lagos. In the men's category, leaders Carno Pillars defeated COAS Shooters 25 to 20 points in an end to end encounter, while the defenders edged past Kada Stars 27 to 20 points. In the women's section, Edo Dynamos outclassed Katsina Desert Queens 33 to 16 points. Meanwhile, Sukato Rima, Safety Babes and Seasider Babes earned maximum points after their opponents failed to show up. The Nigeria Football Federation has announced that Benfica defender Tyrone Ibuhi has replaced the injured Kenneth Omero on the Super Eagles squad for the forthcoming international friendly against the Selecao of Brazil. Omero was injured in action for his Spanish La Liga football club CD Leganes. The 2013 AFCON winner also missed last month's friendly against the Ukraine over visa issues. Ibuhi, on the other hand, has recovered from a long-term injury he suffered at his Portuguese football club. The Super Eagles take on five-time world champions Brazil at the National Stadium in faraway Singapore, and that's on Sunday, October the 13th. In the English Premier League, Tottenham's, Tottenham Hotspur's miserable week has indeed continued as they followed their Champions League humiliation at the hands of Bayern Munich with a damaging defeat at Brighton. A Jeff Hendricks, a splendid volley ensured Burnley punished 10-man Everton and further increased the pressure on embattled Toffees manager Marco Silva. James Milner's stoppage time penalty earned Liverpool a dramatic victory over Leicester at Anfield and extend their winning run in the Premier League to 17 as they remain top of the league at the moment. Aston Villa ruthlessly swept aside an injury hit Norwich to move out of the bottom three and leapfrog their opponents in the table. Crystal Palace snatched a victory at West Ham as Jordan Ayew, the Ghanaian, had an 87th minute goal awarded by the video assistant referee at the London Stadium. And that's a wrap in sports news. I'm Ayo Tundi. Balu. Who's back to you again? Many thanks indeed, Ayo. Uh, most of Hong Kong's metro systems remained shot after a day which saw stations and businesses attacked in violent anti government protests after the use of face masks were banned. Protesters have also embarked on fresh demonstrations, some wearing face masks, in defiance of the announcement of the ban by Chief Executive Carrie Lam. Ms. Lam has defended her decision to invoke emergency powers in order to restore order, saying that the city has been through a very dark night of extreme violence. But while the United Nations Human Rights Chief has called for an independent probe into the violence during anti-government protests in Hong Kong, saying that the injuries are alarming. Iraqi security and medical sources say that the death toll in the anti-government protests that have swept through the country in the past five days has soared to at least 70. The figure has more than doubled since Friday as clashes between protesters and police intensified. The military said that unidentified snipers had killed four people in Baghdad, including two police officers. However, the authorities lifted the daytime curfew in the capital this morning. Prime Minister Adel Abdel earlier said that protesters' legitimate demands has been heard but appealed for calm. Spontaneous protests erupted on Tuesday amidst frustration over Iraq's high youth unemployment rate, uh, its dire public service and chronic corruption. And finally tonight, members of the Ogbobosho community in Oyo State, of course, have uh, promised to preserve the body of a 340-year-old tortoise that died a few days ago and believed to be the oldest animal in the world. Although there is no known documentation to back up the claims, members of the community say the tortoise has overlived 17 out of the 20 traditional rulers of the town since inception. The community has decided not to bury the tortoise but to embalm and preserve it for future generations to learn about the history of the probable oldest animal in the world before its death. 
And the main news again, the Bring Back Our Girls group today marked 2,000 days of Chibok school girls' abduction since 2014. The group also restated calls for the rescue of the remaining 112 girls and others still in Boko Haram captivity, including Dapchi schoolgirl Lia Sharabu. Also today, the Nigerian Air Force continued its onslaught against Boko Haram insurgents in the northeast. The Air Force destroyed hideouts of members affiliated to the ISWAP group in Bruno State. And that's how it's been on the news at 10 tonight. I want to thank you so much indeed for watching. On behalf of all of us here, have a splendid night. Good night.